Okay, we're going to give everybody a little bit of time. You know how Facebook always says they need to go out there and and gather everybody. Yeah, you're live. We're building the audience for you. Okay, I'm not going to stay on here long. So, hello everyone. As you're coming in, thank you so much for joining me. And thank you so much for being here. My name is Carol Dunlop. I am known as the Online Wild WOW Strategist. And I wanted to do this series of... I guess Facebook lives every Tuesday at 8:30 p.m. because I want to help business owners really spread the message that uh, help business owners be to stand out. Sorry, to stand out with their business, to stop struggling, and to start profiting. That's actually the name of my book that's coming out in March. So every Tuesday you'll see me here at 8:30, and I hope that you will join me. Please tell your friends, and we'll build an audience up, start a movement, all that great stuff. So that I can help businesses to be profitable, to be successful, to do the things that they need to do, whether you know you need to do it or not. And tonight I'm talking about how you can, um, how to know if you're an amateur or an expert business owner. So I'm going to see if I can, no, that's a comment, still getting to know all these good things, so. I am the, uh, yes, the social media person, but the social media person has long learned how to do uh, Facebook Lives and Periscopes and all those good things. So if you will bear with me a little bit and learn along with me. So, I mean, I've done a couple of them, but I always just start talking and start going. So let me get into this because we are not going to stay here long. It is 830 and I know a lot of people have had a long day and I want, just wanted to give you a couple of nuggets before you um, go off to La La Land to Sleepyville. So, are you an expert business owner or are you an amateur? So, one of the things that can immediately show that you are an amateur business owner is on your website if you have images that are not sized properly. That is actually one of my pet peeves. I can't stand seeing that. I hate when I go up to someone's um site and they've got the image all squished up and it's supposed to be wider or they've got it all squished down and it's supposed to be taller and that just shows me that they have used the wrong thing the wrong software the wrong something to resize that image and it's just it's one of those things that you can just avoid and the number one way to avoid it is if you're in a, Adobe Photoshop or you're in PowerPoint or any other thing that has an image, if you click on it once so that you see the little um, things that come around the, the corners, the little, I forgot what they call them, brackets or bars or whatever, and then hold down the shift key and then move your mouse so that it all goes together and resizes itself perfectly. Because you can't take a square image and make it look like a tall rectangle or a, sh a short flat um, bar or something you, you you have to resize it proportionally or it doesn't look right when it's sitting on your website or on your flyer or whatever you're putting the, the image on and then it just kind of looks like you don't have attention to detail which is a total rookie mistake it's a total amateur thing I know mistakes happen things happen people forget things they leave stuff out they don't you know they may miss a comma or they may misspell something but when your clients or potential clients catch it, you're showing them that you do not have an attention to detail, that you're doing some rookie stuff, that you may be rushing. And what they think is, they don't think, oh, you know, it's just one of those things that happens sometimes. Um, it's just one of those things that could be avoided or, you know, let's give them another chance. No, what they think is, if that were my project, are you gonna do that on my project? Are you gonna miss something on my project? My letter that needs to go out to all my people, my sign that needs to go up in front of my building, the stuff, the um, report that I need to get out that you're supposed to be doing. Are you going to make a mistake on that, too? So that's really what they're thinking. They're thinking about them and how you might mess up with them or how you make make their picture look kind of off skewed or too skinny or too fat or how you may use the wrong colors on your websites that don't go together or how you may have a thousand fonts on your website that or your flyer or whatever you're putting out there. 
So you have to be careful of those things. Those things will make you look like a rookie or an amateur in any given moment. Or my other thing about images that, I re that really ticks me off when I see it is if someone has an image that they put on a color background, it can be any color, green, purple, orange, I don't care. And they put an image on there and the, you can see like the little white that is making a border around the image where the image is supposed to just lie flat there and you're not supposed to see that white. That is a total rookie mistake. People will look at you and say, what, what's wrong? Why didn't, why didn't you know that that image does not have a white background on it? It's supposed to be transparent. We aren't supposed to be able to see that white. So they will look at you like that, like, what is wrong with you? That's a rookie doing that, right? So it's more than just missing a comma. It's more than just a misspelled word. It's the things, the, the images and how you present. It's the visual stuff that people look at when they are trying to see if they want to hire you to do their work for them. If they want to hire you to create something for them or to do a report, to write something up. I mean, it's any number of things. They always look at, you know, if, if they treat this work this way for themselves, how are they going to treat the work for me? Because everybody knows that you love your work better than anybody else's work in the world because you're like, I am the bomb.com. I am awesome. Look at my work, look how great and wonderful I am. So if you make mistakes on that, or if you don't, if you leave out things, if you put the wrong colors together and wrong colors, I'm saying like, if you have a, um, a bright red and then you put a bright orange and then maybe you stick a little blue in there and some green. Yeah, that's too many colors. Come on. You don't need all those many colors anyway. Unless you got a Rubik's Cube going or something. If you, and if Rubik's Cube is your, is your image, that's what you want to portray, then good for you. But your Rubik's Cube is only in the cube itself. It's not over the whole page. It's not in the top bar. It's not at the bottom. It's not encompassing the logo and the text and all that. You just, it just looks like someone went crazy with crayons. So that's another rookie thing that happens. People just go crazy with these colors. They think that, oh, I want to look, I, I just, I just want it to be vibrant and alive. Well, it can be vibrant and alive without having a hundred thousand colors in it. It can be vibrant and alive and look good and professional without having 50,000 fonts. You can't have that many fonts on a page, that many different ways to, you know, write five different sentences and it's five different fonts. You just can't have that. It just, what happens is you may not know that something's wrong. You, meaning you who are not the graphic designer or the, um, the web designer or a designer period, but you know that something doesn't look right. Something is out of place. So if your mind is telling you that something's out of place, then inside intrinsically, you know that something is wrong and you're like, mm, I don't quite like that. I don't know why type of thing. You may not know what it is, but you know, something is wrong and people can feel that. Sometimes you see something where you just, it just hits you the wrong way. And you're like, well, what is going on? So that's how you know that they, these are rookie mistakes that you make, that people make. And they, and they look at you as a, as a beginning uh, business, as one that doesn't quite fit the bill for what uh, they want you to do. And so they won't look at you as an established, experienced business owner who says, Hey, I can do this and I can do this the right way and I can make you proud of the work that I'm doing for you and you're going to look awesome because that's really what everybody wants. They just want their work. They, they want what they present to the world to come across looking totally awesome, more awesome than anything else in the world could ever look. And that's what you want to present to people about your own stuff. Now, I'm not even talking about client stuff. I'm talking about your own things, your own website your own marketing materials, your own logo, your own everything. And if you, meaning you, who's listening right now, if you are not a designer or a web designer or a graphic designer or a logo designer or a copywriter, do not do those things. Because why? If you are not a professional copywriter, then don't write your own copy. Get somebody else to do it. Pay somebody to do it. Because I'm telling you, if your stuff comes across looking amateurish or just like mm, doesn't sound right or it doesn't make sense to the person who's reading it, they're going to look at you as a rookie or an amateur and they're not going to come to you for what 
they intended to. They're not going to give you their business or they're going to come to you and the business that you do get, they're going to want you to discount it so much. You're going to, you're going to wish that that person never even found you. So if you don't do these things, if you're not an expert designer, if you're not an expert copywriter, if you're not an expert uh, web person, then don't try to do it yourself. It will take you so long to get those things done the right way that you might as well have paid for it in the first place and got it done by someone else and invested that money. And now you can all that time that you save, you can really concentrate on what you do, what makes you the awesome sauce person that you are, the awesome sauce business person that you are and make that shine out for your clients instead of trying to fool with something that you don't know about. So I want to let you guys know that on this Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, I am premiering my brand new podcast, the Unmarket Your Business Podcast. I've got five awesome, powerful women who are going to be a guest on the podcast, and we're going to be talking about how to make your how to make your business stand out, how to make your business great, how to make your business awesome, and how to keep your business successful. So you don't want to miss them. They are totally awesome. I've got five of the ladies who are coming on are also going to be on my summit that's coming out later this month but for right now we're talking about this podcast i created this podcast because i wanted to do what i'm doing now and tell and show business owners that you can have a successful business that you can stand out that you can start profiting and you can stop struggling with just doing a a few little things and it is within your reach because you can do this you can do this you can have an awesome business so i want you to come along on this ride with me and let me help you out If you need anything, just let me know. Like I said, I'm going to be here every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. And it's not going to take much of your time. I'm going to give you a little nugget just like I did tonight every single Tuesday night. And so on Thursday, please join me for the podcast. And you can get there by going to CSICorporation.com slash podcast. Again, that's CSICorporation.com slash podcast. And I hope to see you there. So good night everyone and see you next time.